People have bought into the idea that becoming fit demands grueling hours at the gym or going on a strict diet. However, they may overlook the five areas of physical activity that are essential for them to reach their fitness goals. In this video, world-renowned health expert Dr. Joseph Mercola explains these areas and demonstrates some simple exercises with our fitness trainer, Jill Rodriguez. Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, and research shows that the average American spends nine to 10 hours a day sitting. So you need to cut back on your sitting time and replace it with non-exercise movements like standing or walking. Uh, to me, it's one of the easiest movements to perform. It's just magnificently beneficial. So you might want to consider using a fitness tracker uh, I think they're enormously useful. There's a wide variety of them. If you don't want to spend any money, most of you have a smartphone and you actually have applications in there that can monitor how many steps that you're walking. And remember that movement is in addition to, not a replacement of your exercise regimen. So ideally you want to incorporate a wide variety of movement activities and other exercises. Now, an important element of your exercise program, and this is Jill, she's one of our fitness trainers here at our office in Hoffman Estates, uh, Illinois, uh, is stretching. And stretching is important because it not only improves your mobility and your flexibility, but it also helps protect you from being injured. But there's a catch. Conventional stretching, which is known as static stretching, they actually make you weaker and less stable during your exercise. So I recommend a type of stretching known as AIS, which is short for Active Isolated Stretching. And this is a series of repetitive stretches that are performed in a very precise, specific order. And it targets your muscles and connective tissues to prevent injury. So uh, let's go and uh, demonstrate some of these. All right. For our first stretching demonstration, Doc and I are gonna do a single arm chest stretch. So you want to have something to hold on to. You can either hold on to a post, a door frame, or something about chest height. Okay? Yes. So hang on with a nice firm grip. And what you're going to do is turn away from what you're holding on to. Pause for about two seconds, and then release it. But it's not the only one. There's, there's certainly many others. And if you were to globally provide uh, a discipline that really many people feel is, would represent stretching, it would be yoga. And uh, Jill teaches it and uh, can expand on uh, more of the benefits and the yes. process with that. Yes. So. What I love about it is it's a full body stretch. It works your connective tissue, um, definitely increases your flexibility in a way that's more of a movement type pattern, so rather than just you know, stretching one muscle at a time, which is important, mm -hmm. yoga gets, it's almost like a dance, which I think is why a lot of people are, are attracted to it. Okay, we're here with the power plates, which are a tremendous tool. Uh, power plate is sort of the leader in the industry because they have the motion in three separate directions, not only up and down and vertical and sideways or horizontal, but also front to back front to back, so it's in three planes. Because when you go up and down, that's acceleration, which actually is what happens with gravity. So you're simulating gravity, you can go up to two to six times gravity, but your muscles will feel it and it will really stimulate them. So what the heck is this thing good for? It's good for a number of things. It's good for strength training. It's good for stretching. But I, prim I actually use a little bit for strength training, but I primarily use it for massage and for stretching because I think it's such a great tool. I do it about 30 minutes every day. Yeah, it's 30 minutes of my workout is the power plate. It's just a magnificent tool. So now Jill's gonna show us some stretches on hers. Okay. The power plate, because of the vibration, causes circulation, not just overall in your entire body, but specifically on whatever area you're gonna have on the power plate. So I could just demonstrate a single leg hamstring stretch. I know a lot of people love to 
stretch into the hamstrings. It's generally a tight area for most people. So if you just put the heel on the power plate, curl your toes up, hit the start button, and hold your stretch. So with a squared off hips, bowing forward. This is increasing circulation into the leg. And so I, what I would do is hold for 30 seconds one side, and then I would do 30 seconds on the other side. Okay. Another stretch that I like to do, speaking of beneficial stretches for the hips and back, is an anterior quadriceps, so the front of your leg, and hip flexor stretch. I'm just going to stop that for a second. So with one knee on the power plate and one foot in front, you're going to engage your back muscle by squeezing it and then travel forward. Now we're going to talk about strength training because it is unquestionably in my mind an absolutely crucial component of any comprehensive exercise program. You are fooling yourself if you're not integrating some type of strength training. Ideally, you wouldn't need this. You'd have an active job where you're getting enough challenges to your muscle that it's given is giving you the workout challenge but 98 percent of us plus do not get this what's typically taught is to find a weight that you can do at least eight reps with if you can't do eight the weight's probably too heavy i'm going to do some bicep curls now the, the typical person might come down here and just bend over, but you don't want to do that. You were just asking for trouble. You got to, well, and bend over and squat a little bit and then keep your hips tilted and your back up and then pick it up this way. All right, so you've got these, you can do a hammer curl. I guess we should do one, one set now. So I've got a set of 30s here, which is a comfortable weight for me. 35s would probably be pushing, but we come up slow, or actually come up and then down on three or four or five, but just not right straight down, straight up and then down. So super slow. And actually there's another form, <laughs> which is super, super slow, I call. Are you gonna make me do that? No, well. <laughs> that sounds very hard. <laughs> no, it's not, it, it, well, it's, yeah, it's definitely harder. But with super slow, you're gonna do like eight to 10 reps and we won't do the full 10, but you, because it takes longer, is you're gonna come up on 10 seconds. She's gonna do the biceps curl also, and go down on 10 seconds. Okay. Okay. And with super, super slow, there's only three repetitions. It's down, up, and down, but it's 30 seconds each. Negative. Negatives, two negatives and one positive, yeah. Yeah, so we're well, gonna do the super slow now, right? All right, you gonna count for me? Yes, so we're gonna go up on 10. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we're going to progress into some kettlebells. I love kettlebells because you can you can get a full workout with just one piece of equipment. Yeah. So I'm going to demonstrate the kettlebell swing. Now the kettlebell swing um, is a great core exercise, but it's predominantly a hip exercise, so it's a hip drive. And I generally teach people how to do this without the kettlebell first, um, because the, the kettlebell is weighted and you don't want something out here that might hurt your back. So what I'm going to have you do first is brace your abdominals like I was going to come tickle you, okay? And with your hands in front of you, you're going to bow forward. Okay, so I haven't moved anything. I haven't really stuck my butt back or my chest forward. I've kept my spine in a good alignment and I've shifted my butt back and then it's gonna come forward, okay? So starting with the, the kettlebell sort of in front of you, you're going to reach, brace everything and then get it going. Butt back, butt forward, back, forward. Job. And you can see the intensity that he's working. And that's that's the key. You gotta get intensity from the amount of resistance, which here is on a level uh, nine, on a, on a 20 level machine, and then during the easy parts, level four or five. There you go. Hard and fast, last sprint. Ten seconds to go. Right, 
Almost there. Five, four, three. Almost there. Got it. That's it. Got it. Congratulations. It's over. It is. <laughs> that will kick your butt if you're doing it properly. But this is what you need to take control of your health. There's no doubt that staying as active as you can is key to optimal health. Treat exercise like it's just another part of your everyday life. Don't think of it as a chore, otherwise you'll end up losing your motivation.